Hello everyone, Charles Watts here, the Arsenal correspondent at Goal, joining you the day before Arsenal take on Aston Villa at Villa Park, looking to get back to winning ways after that disappointing, frustrating defeat really at Wolves in midweek, a defeat which kind of knocked Arsenal out of the stride, killed the momentum a little bit that they're beating what had been an unbeaten start in the league in 2021 but there was still plenty to like about that performance and I'm not going to go over the reasons why Arsenal lost you all know them um, but I still think there was plenty to like about that first half performance especially when it was 11 on 11 which hopefully means that confidence will not be knocked too much by that defeat and Arsenal can carry on in the fine recent form we've seen when they head to Villa Park on uh, on Saturday against Villa team obviously that beat Arsenal 3-0 earlier in the season at the Emirates absolutely hammered them could have been more as well. That was kind of the start, actually was the start, um, of Arsenal's terrible, terrible run that they had that lasted all the way up to Christmas. Obviously, they've got back to um, winning ways now and put that, fingers crossed, behind them. Um, but yeah, I think we all remember what happened that game at the Emirates when Villa, Grealish and uh, Watkins, Barkley just tore Arsenal to shreds, really, and really gave um, everyone a bit of a wake-up call at the start of the season. So hopefully Arsenal can go and get a little bit of revenge tomorrow. I will be there, heading up there bright and early. It's the early kickoff for once. Arsenal not um, having a late game in the Premier League, which is nice. I will be at Villa Park and I'll try and do the usual videos if I can before and after the game. Um, we'll start off with a little bit of news, obviously, from yesterday. I'm sure you've heard it all by now and gone through it and debated it with your mates. You've probably seen what I've had to say as well on, on social media, but David Luiz's appeal was rejected yesterday by the FA, despite the fact that they overturned the one for Bednarek for Southampton, um, which happened on the same night, which is pretty much the exact same thing. And yet Luiz's appeal was rejected and Southampton's one was successful. Make of that what you will. Arsenal released a statement, said we have worked really hard to overturn David Luiz's red card. We presented our case to the FA, but are disappointed that our appeal has been unsuccessful. We accept the FA's decision and continue our preparations for Saturday's match against Aston Villa. So Arsenal expressing their disappointment, which I'm not surprised at because I think I mean, it should never have been a red card. I'm not going to talk about it too much again because I've already said my piece on it all. Um, but it always felt, I thought, like an appeal that Arsenal were unlikely to win. And that has been the case, unfortunately. But I think we've just got to move on now. Look, the damage has been done. Losing David Luiz for one game isn't the big, um, isn't really the big damage. The damage was done on Tuesday night when uh, Arsenal ended up losing the game because of it. That They were absolutely nailed on to win or looked absolutely nailed on to win. So um, whether the appeal was successful or not doesn't really make too much of a difference because... Um, you know, Arsenal got centre back so you can come in and cover for Louise at the weekend, but losing that three points on Tuesday night was particularly frustrating. Even more frustrating now because Tottenham lost last night against Chelsea, um, and Arsenal would be sitting above Tottenham right now in the Premier League, which is always a nice feeling. Um, but uh, hopefully by the end of this weekend they will be anyway, so it won't really matter too much. So let's talk a little bit against about that game against Aston Villa tomorrow, shall we? Like I said already, Arsenal looking for revenge from that 3-0 defeat against uh, Villa at the Emirates earlier in the season. Villa disappointing defeat for them in midweek as well. Absolutely comfortably beaten by West Ham at Villa Park. Um, and Mikel Arteta was kind of asked about that in the build-up to tomorrow's game. Uh, he said, look, I'm not here to judge their performance against West Ham. They've been fantastic through the season. They've beaten some top teams. They've been in a really strong run and beat us when we played them at home. So we have to make sure we go there and win the game. Um, and I think Mikel's quite right to not really focus on their game. Even week. you've got to focus on the wider picture of their season so far. And Villa have had a very, very good season. They've got some really dangerous players. They're great on the counter-attack, as we saw at the Emirates. And uh, Arsenal are going to have to deal with that and deal with it well if they want to make sure they get a much better result than they did in North London. You kind of look at some of the players that Villa are really impressive with and the interchange in between Barkley and Grealish and Watkins. They, they, they were the players that caused Arsenal all that problem, all those problems at the Emirates, and that's what Arsenal are going to have to try and deal with, I think, on Saturday night, uh, Saturday more afternoon, <laughs> if uh, if they're going to make sure they come away with something from the game. They can't give those players the space they were given at the Emirates to pick them off on the on the counter attack, and when they when they win the ball back quickly and move away. So I think the Thomas Partey was obviously he got an injury early on in that Villa game at the Emirates, and uh, that really affected Arsenal. And hopefully this time it won't be the case. And uh, you know Partey's going to be there, and I think that's going to make a big difference in stopping that little sort of interplay that Villa did so successfully in and around Arsenal's final third. 
at the Emirates. I think that's going to be um, it's going to be really important for Arsenal having party in that mid midfield, which was he was certainly missing when he sort of limped through the first half in that in the three 0 defeat, and then didn't come out for the second half. And Arsenal certainly missed him a lot in that one. There's some really big decisions I think for Mikel Arteta to make for the first time in a while in terms of the team news. I think because or the team selection because obviously it looks like there's going to be a, a couple of players injured. There's obviously the suspensions to Louise and Leno. So there's a lot for Mikel to ponder, I think. I just wanted to go through some of the big decisions that I'm thinking. I and mean, we'll start with the goalkeeper. I think it's although this is a big decision, it's probably an easy one. If Matt Ryan's fit, Matt Ryan plays. Um, I don't think there's any doubt about that. It's just a case of if he's fit because he's not been training. We haven't had a team news update from it on Arsenal yet. They're not telling us exactly what's going on with Ryan. Um, there could be a team news update later today from Arsenal, but they, they're not entirely sure if they're going to put one out or not, but hopefully they will, um, which might tell us a little bit more. But if if it's a case of having to sort of, I don't know, inject Ryan to get him through, to kill, kill the pain in his hip and get him through a game, I'm not sure it's really worth doing that. You'd go with Runison, but if he's 100% fit or even 95% fit, I think Arsenal will go with him. If not, it's going to have to be Alex Runison in goal. So that's maybe not... a, a and a difficult decision for Arteta, but it is an important one. But the real big decision, I think, certainly who comes in at centre-back, you think it's going to be Gabriel, but Pablo Mari is back fit now, and Mari was playing so well with Rob Holding not too long ago before the injury. So um, I think, again, fitness is going to come into this one again. Mari hasn't played for a while. Gabriel, although he's been in and out, at least he's had some minutes recently, even though he's looked pretty shaky in some of them. So I imagine it's going to be Gabriel and Rob Holding as that centre-back partnership. Um um, but certainly Mary's going to come into the equation if he's, if he's totally fully fit just because of the partnership that Mary and Holden have showed. I think Mikel would be quite keen to reunite those two because it was working so well not too long ago. But I imagine it's going to be Gabriel. You, you, you'd think just because he's further ahead in his recovery and in terms of how many minutes he's had recently compared to Pablo Mary. But I think the, the main two issues for Mikel to think about is what he's going to do in attack. What do you do at number 10? You know, do you hand Martin Odegaard his debut? Emil Smith Rowe has played so many minutes, he played 90 minutes in midweek as well, which was a bit of a surprise. Um, he looked really tired against Man United the week in the game before. I think you've got to start thinking about giving um, Emil a rest. And, um, you know, Odegaard's had a while now to settle in. He's, you know, he's adjusted to his new team teammates, I'm sure. And I do wonder if we're going to see Odegaard this weekend. It wouldn't surprise me at all to see him line up in that number 10 role. Um, that uh, he played so well in for Sociedad. And so I think this might be the game we see him. Uh, so that's, I think, the one really big decision, number 10. And then you've got the decision on the left-hand side. What do you do now? Do you bring Aubameyang back in the team? Or do you start continue with Pepe, who's in fantastic form? Personally, for me, I think you absolutely have to start Pepe. If you took Pepe out now, it'd send all the wrong messages. He's absolutely flying. He's playing some of the best football I've seen for a while, not just in terms of football, but his work rate is energy levels, winning the ball back, working for the team, tracking back, helping defences. Looks like a completely new Pepe in the last couple of games, especially since he's moved out to the left-hand side. So I think you've got to play Pepe, even though it's uh, Bamiang is back and available now and he's your main goal scorer. He normally would be your main goal scorer. I think it would send out all the wrong messages if suddenly Pepe finds himself out of the team again and knock his confidence drastically. Um, so I think, although it's probably a fairly difficult decision for Mikel to make because on one hand you've got your club captain you've got your top goal scorer your main goal scorer and the other hand you've got Pepe who hasn't always done it for you um, so in one way it's a bit of a difficult decision but personally for me I think you've got absolutely got to start Nicolas Pepe and um, I think Mikel kind of knows that he said it yesterday he said look at the end of the day we have to play the players who are in the best form and everybody has to earn the right to play and participate in the games that's what everybody's doing pushing each other to raise the level you can see that the level has been raised because everybody's playing at their best there's still room for improvement so everybody has to keep pushing I think sort of reading between the lines with that statement when he's saying you have to play the players in the best form you're talking about Nicolas Pepe and when you say everyone has to earn their right to play you're talking about Aubameyang because he hasn't been in the team recently and he has to earn his right to get back in into the team so um for for me i think although it's a difficult decision as i said personally i think you certainly go pepe and judging by what Mikel said there i think he he kind of knows it as well and it will have to be uh, pepe lining up on the left hand side and in terms of team news for tomorrow like i said arsenal hopefully going to release a bit of an update at some point today so keep an eye out for that one i will put it out on my social media as well as soon as i hear about it but the main news obviously leno and louise are suspended after their red cards in midweek 
Kieran Tierney looking very, very unlikely that he's going to be back yet with this lower leg injury that he's suffering from. Matt Ryan's got a sore hip. He's going to be tested right at the end to work out if he's fit enough or not. Pablo Mari is fit and available after um, his recent injury issues. So they're the main bits of team news for Arsenal ahead of the game um, at Villa Park. Now I'll just go through my predicted 11. As always, this isn't the 11 that is I've heard or got information is going to be playing. It's just me predicting what I'm ex what I can see Mikel going with on Saturday. So I'm going to go with Runnison in goal. I know he would like to play um, ideally Matt Ryan, but I think given he's not been training at all really, um, it's going to be a bit of a risk if to throw Ryan straight back in. And I thought Runnison, fair play to him, he did all right against Wolves when he came on. Made a couple of good stops. He was a bit shaky with the ball at his feet a couple of times. But he made a couple of good saves in really tricky goalkeeping conditions as well. So hopefully his confidence was boosted a little bit by that. So I'm expecting Runnison in goal. In terms of defence, obviously Bellerin I'm sticking with at right back. Cedric to continue at left back in the absence of Kieran Tierney. Then centre back, so I'm going with Rob Holding, obviously. Um, and then I'm going to go with Gabriel alongside him. Um, as I said earlier in the video, I think Pablo Mari and Holden are an excellent partnership. But Mary hasn't played at all for a fair while now. Gabriel has at least had some minutes played in the FA Cup game at Southampton. Came on for the second half against Wolves in midweek. So I think Gabriel's yeah, probably nailed on to be the replacement for Louise at centre-back. Um, in midfield, obviously, picks itself at the moment. Both playing so, so well. Granit Xhaka and Thomas Partey, who I thought were fantastic again against Wolves. Um, really excited by that partnership that those two are building. It's getting, it seems to be getting better and better with every game. The understanding they're building up together. Then, right, the front four I'm going with. I am going to say Saka, obviously, right wing, absolutely nailed on. I'm going to go with Martin Odegaard for his debut at number 10. I just think the time is right to give Emil a little bit of a rest. I thought he's looked tired against United. I thought he looked pretty tired against Wolves. I was surprised he didn't come on. Um, come off in the second half when Mikel was making some changes against Wolves. So Odegaard at number 10, I'm going to go with Nico Pepe at left wing. Absolutely deserves his place in the team at the moment, playing so well. Um, as I said, would send out all the wrong messages if he was dropped this weekend for Aubameyang. And up front, obviously you do have Orba as an option as playing as a central striker, but I think Mikel will stick with Lacazette um, playing as a central forward in that, in that front four. So there's my predicted at 11 for you. Just run through it again. Runner sitting goal. Back four of Bellerin, Holding, Gabriel and Cedric. Midfield partnership, Granit Xhaka and Thomas Partey. And then up front, Bakaya Saka on the right. Nicholas Pepe on the left. Martin Odegaard at number 10. And Alexander Lacazette as the central striker. So that means Pierre-Emerick Aubameyang still waiting on the bench for now. Again, that was just my predicted 11. No information, no inside information on what Mikel's going to do. That's just what I'm expecting him to go for. Right, that's about it for today's video. Thank you very much for watching, everyone. Appreciate it. As always, like I said, I will be heading up to Villa Park at the weekend. So keep an eye out for all the usual Arsenal stuff in and around the game. I'll be on here on YouTube in a couple of videos if I can. All my stuff on goal.com, all the reaction as well. So please do check me out on Twitter at Charles underscore Watts. Until then, everyone enjoy the rest of your day. Uh, like I said, please do check out my Twitter for all the latest Arsenal news that happens throughout the day and building up to Saturday. Have a good one. I'll speak to you soon.